Ding dong, the wicked bitch is dead. <laughs>what's up everybody welcome back to krs tv this is your boy kenny and this is the haves and the have not season 7 episode 18 and the name of this episode is a new leaf man the ending had all of us shocked so let me get there y'all so this is where it began the episode opened up jim is on the phone with lloyd and he's talking about you know how the hell was there an account created in my name? Who the hell created the account? Um, Lloyd pretty much says it's Veronica Harrington. She was trying to hide money from David due to the divorce settlement. And she told me to open an account in your name. And pretty much um, Candace Young is named the manager of the account. You know, so she's the only one that can give you the money. And he was like, you fat moron, you fucking idiot. And then we see what where it picked up um where it left off on the last episode justin is gotten roughed up by those goons that veronica set in and let's just say they pulled his pants down and old boy had his way and you literally saw them holding them back and old boy was literally throwing it you know through the bars and they literally got him so bad that they literally made justin go unconscious so they roughed him up pretty bad. And I was like, damn. So Veronica, so Veronica's plan worked. Then we see that um, Catherine and Hannah talk on the phone. And Hannah's like, well, what, what do you find out? Well, she says, when I talked to Jim, he said the cryo company, you know, that's not his account. Um, and when he left here, he was pissed. And she was like, oh, he better not come over here with that bullshit. And she's like, I'm on my way. Because she knows that Jim is crazy, that he probably would show up. And then um, she goes to talk to Benny. They sit in the kitchen. And she says, Catherine, Catherine said that Jim might be coming over here. And then Benny's like, I wish he would. And then all of a sudden you hear in the other room, looks like you got your wish. This motherfucker done let himself up in the damn house. He's sitting there on the living room. And he's just talking cash shit to both Hannah and Benny. Like, I'm not leaving here till I get my money. He's like, yo, bro. He's like, yo, bro. What you gonna do, huh? Yo, bro. Yeah, yo. What? I'm not leaving here till I get my fucking money. And all of this. And she, and she was like, um. I'm like, um. And pretty much Hannah holds him back. And she was saying that, look. Um. And she says that. But the thing is, it said it was went to the crying company. What you mean? And he's like, are you that stupid? And he was like, oh, call my mother stupid. He's like, yeah, what? What you going to do? And he was like, your daughter created the account in my name. I want it back. So call that bitch of a daughter of yours and get my money back. And she's like, call my daughter out of her name one more time. And he was like, your daughter's a bitch. And you the bitch who gave birth to her. And all this, she was like, Woo. Next thing you know, we see her moving chairs. She moved the table. And all of a sudden, she sat down and she was like, Benjamin, this motherfucker is all yours. Benny lunged and he beat the dog shit out of Jim. Mopped the floor with his ass. And then damn Hannah was like, I wish I had a cigarette. I was like, damn. So seeing her, seeing Jim get his ass beat was just like sex to her. It got her off. And she was like, yeah, uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, he literally dragged Jim by his feet down the damn, outside the house and down the um front steps and was still beating his ass. And then Hannah stopped him. Um... And then all of a sudden, Hannah had a one-on-one -on -one to him. She's like, I'm going to call my daughter and, and try to get you your money back. But we from two different worlds, bruh. You pull some shit like this again, we're not going to drag you outside. Your ass will be leaving in a wagon on your way to the damn morgue. And as a matter of fact, 
that's exactly what I want you to do. I'm like, you better tell his ass, Hannah. And he's just like, I want my money. I'm like, yeah, he want that money because he only got 3400 in his account. Jim ain't got shit, and he want that money because Catherine done cut him off financially. So that's why you so gung-ho about this money. It ain't about Wyatt or nothing. You want that money for yourself. So Catherine shows up, and she pretty much tells Jim, get your ass out of here. What the hell is wrong with you? And then all of a sudden, Catherine and Hannah have a conversation, and she's like, you know, the crier company, like, like, how the hell did this even happen? Like, and why are you mad at me? I didn't do it. I don't have it, you know? And, and Catherine's like, I know this. And she's like, you know, and she's like, like, you need to control that motherfucker because he doing too much. Like, you know he came in here with a key? Like, this motherfucker walk around like he own the damn world and shit. Like, he untouchable. I'm like, yeah, and that's pretty much a part of Jim's problem. His ego is just insane. You know, he's always saying, I'll handle it, I'm doing this, and all he does is just make shit worse. Like, the reason why your son's a loose cannon is because you got him locked up in the damn house, and you thinking you helping him, you're making this shit worse because, as we see in this episode, that damn... That damn tick is going off in Wyatt's brain, you know, and him, the fact that he's a junkie, um, he's literally a loose cannon and he can just snap at any moment. But um, she's like, you know what? I got to squeeze his balls a little tighter. I'll get Jim together. And she's like, and she apologizes to Hannah that Jim came in her house and showed his ass. But he got his ass whooped because, first of all, you don't walk up in nobody's motherfucking house and try to regulate shit. And he's saying, oh, yeah, I can walk in here if I want to. It's my property. For correction, it's Catherine's property. You don't own nothing, Jim. Like, Jim is so arrogant and full of shit that he just thinks he's entitled to all this shit. And you don't own any of it. Like, Jim is just a delusional asshole. So then we get a scene where Justin, a.k.a. Glenn Close, is knocked out with his pants down. But I'm like, Tyler, this is kind of unbelievable because those damn, those damn draws were pure white. Now, if he really got ran through, it should have been red like the Nile when Moses decided to um, turn the um, water into blood. It should have been, it should have been believable. I mean, you didn't have to rip it, but it should have it should have been a mess. And then all of a sudden the cop goes in and she sees that he's unconscious and she said like, "What the hell? Did you guys do this to him?" He's like, "No, nah, he was hitting himself on the bars." And she's like, "Then why is his pants down?" He said, "He wanted to get at us, but we don't get down like that." And they end up calling the ambulance for him. Then we get a scene between Broderick and Rocky. Broderick is on some scared shit. He is packing up and is about to leave town. Damn Rocky shows up and he's saying like, I'm getting, and like, he's like asking Broderick, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Then I'm like, I'm not getting deported. and I'm not going through none of this shit. You heard what he fuck this, what he fucking said and where the hell is RK? Oh, we don't know where RK is? I'm definitely getting the fuck out of here. And then Rocky is like, come on, man. It's, they're not going to deport us. All we got to do is give up Candace and that's it. And he's like, damn, you really want to give up Candace, don't you? And he's like, hell yeah. I want to see her go down. And it's like, well, obviously, you ain't learned. She whooped your ass before. And he's like, that's the main reason why. You know, I want to see her taken down. And and he's saying that, look, we just have to cooperate. And they're not going to deport us. And all of a sudden, they get a knock on the door. It's Catherine. Um... Rocky leaves and she's like, oh, you're leaving? Why don't you stay? I got the two of you both here at the same time. And remember, Rocky ain't feeling Catherine because he said having sex with Catherine was like having sex with his mother. And he wasn't feeling that. So Ro Rocky ends up leaving. And then pretty much Broderick tells her that, look, I got into some shit. You know, they found out about the prostitution ring and she said, I thought I told you to shut it down. He's like, well, I did. Stop lying. No, the fuck you didn't, Broderick. That's The shit was still going on. And and he was like, well, that's just it. The, the FBI is now on to me, and I'm not going to be deported. I got to get the hell out of here. And he just pretty much tells her everything that went down because Broderick is scared. 
You know, Broderick was talking a good game. He got some swag. But we come to find out that Broderick ain't really about that life. Um, and then she pretty much says that, look, I don't want you to leave, Broderick. Because I'm saying, ooh. Oh, yeah. Kath, yeah. Broderick done put it down on you. She don't want that, um, she don't want that Latin heat to leave. She was like, oh, no, I don't want you to leave. Let me help you. And then she was like, really? He's like, yeah. Just, just, just come with me and I'll show you a whole new world. I'm like, okay, Jasmine. Up here trying to take your Aladdin, you know, on a magic carpet ride and shit. I'm like, okay. So they end up leaving out and that was, that was the last we seen of them. You know, we then we go to see that um, Benny then whipped um, Jim so bad that his wound started to bleed. And he thought he had his wound open, but the wound was still tight. But, you know, he aggravated it, so it was bleeding. So she was cleaning his wounds and everything. Um, and pretty much, um, they try to call Candace. Candace is not answering her phone. And then all of a sudden, Hannah was like, you know she's doing this on purpose. You know, and then... You know, Benny was like, because, you know, she's always quick to think the worst when it comes down to her daughter. And then again, I'm like, okay, I know she forgave her. But then again, I understand why, because Candace has done so much shit. And even though you forgave her, you know Candace has her ways. But then again, one thing that Hannah be missing, your damn son is just as messed up as Candace. Your son ain't no saint. And that's, and I, and like, you know, shout out to James Caldwell, because he called this out that if Hannah didn't have them kids, Hannah would have a good life. I have to agree with that. So, but he's like, you know, maybe Candace is taking care of things. Don't just don't jump to conclusions. So then we go to a Veronica's house. RK done made himself that made himself comfortable. He got a drink and everything, you know, just chilling at Veronica's house. And he calls Candace and leaves her a message. So then we see that Veronica's talking with the FBI. Um, the agent that she's talking to is Agent Morris, and Agent Morris wants to take her down because he pretty much knows about the car bombing. Um, you know, the guy, Will, you know, who did the bomb, he kind of, like, gave Veronica up when he got busted and she didn't pay him the rest of the money that she owed him. So, and he said that, you know, so we know that you built the bomb, that you had a bomb built, you know, we got his word and everything. Um, and she was like, so won't you tell me, FBI, which stands for foolish, blind, and ignorant, you know, don't you know that old boy got a rap sheet and that he was charged with murder? You know, you know, and she and she and he was like, well, fine, if that's the case, then how did he get off? And I heard and I knew you the one who represented him. And she's like, he got off because I'm good at what I do, you know. Um, none of his witnesses panned out and all that, so he was he was free to walk, you know, and and she pretty much says that, you know, she pretty much says that look, you know, the FBI state president, you don't have anything, you know, and she pretty much um, and then she was like, you know, I'm a seasoned attorney. So, you ain't got nothing on me. And she's like, yeah, the same woman who destroyed her rival. I mean, were you that mad that your husband, that your, that your husband was messing with a younger woman? And she's like, and did you know that the younger woman, the victim, was a whore? And I'm not just saying that. I'm saying that's what she is. She had a pimp, and she was a part of a gang. And the gang that she was with is the man who's making these accusations against me. You know? And I'm like, yeah, because, you know... <clears throat> yeah, you know, you know, Warwick Mincy Lewis. You know, ask about him. Mm-hmm. You know... Yeah, he had a vendetta against her. And he wanted her dead. So she put this shit on fucking... On a fucking dead man. <laughs> I was like, Veronica was spinning this shit. <clears throat> and and she was like, like, and like, he wanted her dead. And then he was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm, 20 years later, huh? And, and then she was like, um, uh, well, if, 
you know, so, and if anything, I also will definitely build a case of the fact that you falsely arrested me. And he's like, I didn't arrest you. You're not arrested. And so she's like, oh, that's the case. I'm free to go. He's like, oh, no, no, no. And she's like, well, I want my phone call. And if I'm not arrested, I can leave. And she was like, oh, no, make your phone call. So, and she was, and she even said that I'll call several judges and all that shit. So she ends up calling David. She tells David they arrested me on domestic terrorism. Um, could you come down here? And that kid, uh, and also go in my house to make sure that kid don't take anything. He was like, what kid? He's like, my young lover. David going there and see RK. RK sitting there drunk in the drink, talking his shit. See, the problem with RK is that uh, RK is too cocky for his own good. He be smelling his own ass, but he's literally playing around with these rich people not even thinking that he's putting himself in danger i'm like you keep fucking with veronica veronica's fucking crazy and then david ain't ain't for the bullshit he fucking rough damn um rk up was like get your ass up out of here and and then he's like and then he's like oh yeah and give me them damn keys because he was gonna take veronica's other car and he got the damn keys from him and shit and I was like, damn, RK just came when He tried that shit at the Criers, and <laughs> he tried that shit with Veronica. So now his ass is out and strung out again. So then we see it um, at the um, FBI headquarters. Scott runs into Morris, and we come to find out Scott was the one that sent Morris over um, after Veronica because he saw her talking to Candace on the video. So... Scott is a fucking bloodhound and he is an evil shit. So he pretty much says that, um, you know, you might as well let her go. You know, we ain't really got nothing on her. We, I just told you to bring her in, you know, because, um, because I saw on, um, on video with Candace, but obviously she has no connection to us. So just let her go. And he's like, but why she, she pretty much, you know, killed somebody. She's a murderer. And he's like, well, I could care less about that. My main objective is Candace Young. Let her go. And you think you're going to be able to win in court with her against him? She'll eat his ass alive. So pretty much Morris goes in and tells Veronica she's free to go. And she's like, I know that. And that was the end of that. Then we get Wyatt and his good-for-nothing junkie ass. He calls Jeffrey tells Jeff and pretty much talks to Jeffrey and Jeffrey immediately knows that he's high. He's like, you high? And he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to kill everybody in, in the house. And he's like, look, don't call me when you high. I've already told you that. And he's like, some friend you are, you know, I'm just calling to say goodbye. You know, the wild, wild west, the wild, wild west, you'll see. Um, and he's like, yeah. I'm going to kill my family, and then I'm going to do myself. I'm like, this crazy son of a bitch. But the problem is, Jeffrey ain't taking it seriously, and Jeffrey should. You know, because Wyatt is not only drugged out, but Wyatt ain't got shit to lose at this point. And he's willing to do any and everything to get revenge because he hates his parents. And then worse more than that, he also hates himself. So... After that, after he gets off the phone with Wyatt, because he kind of like just dismissed Wyatt and said like, Wyatt, don't call me when you hide. But then all of a sudden, he gets a call about um, Justin, and Justin done put damn Jeffrey down as his next of kin, because Justin ain't got nobody. So he's like, you know, and he's pretty much saying that, well, are you his next of kin? And he was like, no. But then his ass started asking all these questions. Um... And he was saying that, you know, well, what happened? It's like, well, he was in a bad accident. And he started asking all this question. It's like, well, we can't give you that information if you're not the next of kin. And he just started asking, well, what's going on? What happened? Where is he? Like, is he okay? And they just hung up on his ass. And he was like, ooh, county hospital. So he on the way to the hospital to try to find fucking Justin. And I'm like, that damn Jeffrey. Like, I'm, I'm like literally so over Jeffrey at this point because Jeffrey... Jeffrey is in love with this boy and he just don't want to admit this shit like you just got a connection to danger because Madison called this shit out like you like you like these disturbed guys because you love punishing yourself and a lot of it has to do with his mother and because of that conditioning he literally found a man 
that is just as controlling and abusive as his mother has been all his life. Go figure. So, so pretty much we see that Veronica and David are So pretty much we see that Veronica and David have finally arrived back at Veronica's house and she was like they have nothing and he's like um you know we need to talk and she was like oh so it's a talk about me getting you guys off and he was like no it's about us you know and then all of a sudden it came she went to that bullshit about the living room you know we're not sitting in there remember and he's like And then she says that, um, let me go check upstairs to see that this fool didn't rob me. But yeah, we can talk by the pool. And then he was like, I still love you. And she's like, I still love you too. And yeah, we got a lot of making up to do. And all of that. So that, that, so it went from there. Then it went from Wyatt and Jim. You know, he pretty much sees that that damn Wyatt is up in there drinking. And it looked like a soda. But then he was like, um... What the hell are you drinking? He's like, I'm just drinking a soda. And he smelled it and knew it. he done fucking put some liquor in that shit. And he broke into the wine um, cabinet and shit. And he's like, then he was like, damn, looks like somebody broke your ribs. And he's like, you know what, Why you're such a fucking loser and a junkie. And you keep pushing me. And, and, <clears throat> um, and then he was like, and then, he, and then like, you know, actually that's what Jim said. Jim was like, keep pushing me, Wyatt. Well, actually, no, my bad. Blah. Forgive me. He, It was Wyatt that was like, keep pushing me, Dad. Just keep pushing me. Come on. He's like, oh, yeah, what the hell you going to do? Like, fuck you. Like, and then um, he gets a call, and it's Scott, you know, talking about, you know, I would like for you to meet with the Attorney General. He's like, you know, I want you to meet with a very powerful person. And, and he was like, oh, John, please. I know who John is. He ain't that damn powerful. What the hell I need to meet with him for? He's like, no, I think you misunderstood, Mr. Cryer. I'm talking about the most, very, a very powerful person, the Attorney General himself. And, you know, pretty much, um, he's like, okay, fine, I'm open to meet with him. You know, the CBS is saying, he's like, yeah, I think you're going to really be interested with this one. After that, Candace calls Jim and lets him know, I'm giving you the money back, you know, and... He was like, well, why you want to do this? Oh, because you're there with your new little president-elect that you didn't shacked up with? He was like, look. She's like, look, I'm turning over a new leaf, but I need your account number so I can send it to you. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll give you the, um, just just give me the account number. And he said he'll text it to you. To you. He's like, he told her that he'll text it to her. And she says, don't mess with my brother. So then, while that's going on in the room with Candace downstairs... Charles and Oliver are talking and he pretty much says he pretty much um, gives Charles the phone and was like the story's everywhere and the press is outside he fucking calls Landon it's like Landon you're fired and all of a sudden you know when Candace was about to press the button to send the money Charles comes in and she shuts the um she shuts the laptop and then he turns on the TV and they are going in about Candace like you know, she's trash and she doesn't belong in the White House. I can't believe he would do this to us and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, the story about Candace and all that shit has now hit the fan. And now the press is eating it up. And it's and it's also attached to Charles. So, it's now a big old mess. And Oliver was trying to tell you, Charles, you need to get rid of her and get her out of there. But now you done attached yourself to her. And now your whole president-elect your whole situation can be in jeopardy because we saw that the attorney general and scott their mission is to use candace to take down charles you know kill two birds with one stone so then you know so then we see that david and veronica are sitting by the pool and david's like look i'm trying to make peace and she and she was like okay well if we're gonna do that we need to have jeffrey committed you know, to one of those little, you know, groups where they pray and meditate. I was like, damn, bitch, you know, you you talking about like, but I'm a cheerleader. 
Y'all need to check out that movie if you haven't seen it. It stars um, Natasha Leone, Clea Duvall, and RuPaul. It's called But I'm a Cheerleader. It's about, you know, a uh, homosexual anonymous boot camp, you know, where they try to cha make you try to take the gay away and make you straight. And pretty much David's like, man, that's, that's not going to work, you know. And she's like, well... If we, if she's like, well, if we're going to get back together, you know, our son has to become straight. And she's like, and she's like, well, the thing is, we cannot do that to our son. Our son is who he is. And that's about it. And then all of a sudden she was like, huh, you still think you think he's your son, huh? It's like, yes, I do. Why wouldn't he be? And she was like, you're not his father, um, David. I had an affair. And I was even planning on leaving you for him because we got into this. We were having problems. I was going to leave you for this man who's actually Jeffrey's father. But then I think he done got this gay shit from his daddy because I walked on him with another man. You know, William, your co-worker, get a closer look at him. He's a splitting image of Jeffrey. So then he was, so then she was like, so um, you still want to get back together? I'm like, Veronica, you evil whore. So, and I'm saying, I said that this shit was going to come back. She did tell Jeffrey, I think last season, that um, that that um, David wasn't his father. And at first I was thinking, was it Derek? But now we know it's not Derek. It's a co-worker of David. So this person, so he's been working around this person this whole time. And the whole time this dude was actually Jeffrey's father and he had no idea so she was real smug like so now do you still want to get back together and he was like no nah, I just want to get close to you and I want to do exactly what I said and she was like and what is that to kill you Next thing you know, he fucking grabs her ass. They tussle. They in the damn pool. And he literally drowned her ass. And she was floating like a fish in a damn in a damn fishbowl. Dead as a motherfucking doorknob. And Tyler, if she's still alive, I am going to be pissed off, Tyler. Because with Veronica dead... You can take this story to a whole nother level. But shout out to Angel Robinson. Because she is a phenomenal actress. She's one of the biggest attractions of this show. But if they kill Veronica. This can create a whole nother thing of storylines. And this show can still go on. But if you killed her ass. She better stay dead Tyler. You better not come up with no bullshit. Oh she just passed out. And she just comes too. I'm going to be mad as shit. You better, you better keep her dead, Tyler. Because you know you like to play this, you know, you know, I'm going to make it look like the person's dead and then they come back to life. Oh, isn't that neato? Don't do this shit, Tyler. Mm-mm. But yeah, that ending had me gagged because she was just floating. I'm like, damn, he done killed her ass. This shit is crazy. So that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of the Has and the Have Nots. So until next time, everybody, take care.